We are back here in the final segment of our program, Jones and Company, and uh, we are speaking with uh, Mr. Ruben Rubbing, who has a whole lot of ideas for his uh, constituency, Pinewood, and uh, how uh, he's going to seek to empower the people in Pinewood, young and old, eh? Mm -hmm. Young and uh, old. Um, various initiatives, and one of the uh, things that I, uh, I hear is that you have brought uh, together uh, all of the factions um, in Pinewood for the common good mm -hmm. uh, to bring about community bonding, mm -hmm. eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. Um, there's good and bad in everybody. Mm -hmm. And I am not naive and I'm not ignorant. I believe, as I said clearly in my first address, that our people deserve even the right to fail. And again, I sincerely um, refer to you so much because I'm really impressed with where you are here. Mm. Um, I am I'm not, not an expert at, but I'm familiar with your struggles. And I praise God because you too is like a hero that people could see. Stick with it. Stick with it. I guarantee if you had dropped this, somebody else would have picked it up and you'll probably say, wow, I let go of my dream. You stuck with it. This is what our children need to learn. You know why some of them get frustrated and kill people? Because something happened, a girlfriend leave them, whatever else, something go wrong, they feel hopeless. But any man with hope, you can't swing him, you know. You take that carrot, he turn around, I can grow that again. It's like Donald Trump. I give a positive about Donald Trump. How many times has that man been through bankruptcy? But he had the art of making money when it's on the inside of you. We bring our people together for, for, for what is good in them. And at the end of the day, people must realize that the great, the best, uh, opportunity is not even 100% ownership. It's greater safety when you have a share with communal ownership. Um, I'm grateful for the persons who are around. I am not ignorant at all of their propensities. Mm -hmm. But I'm sincerely committed to their promise and their demonstration of sincerity towards the community. And I will say again, I am not ignorant of their propensity. Mm -hmm. I am a student of people. I understand. I know people. But I know, you know what, I'm a person too. Yeah. And all will have the opportunity yeah. to succeed. Yeah. Um, Ms. Rumming, you know, um, there has been a, uh, the rate of, of crime yes, um, in many of these heartland communities, uh, the rate has been really high. And Pinewood has had a share mm -hmm. of homicides oh, yes. uh, uh, in, in recent times. Yes young men in particular who are marauding, uh, creating havoc in, in that area. And there um, seems to be something wrong with the value system yes. of, of young men. The, what one preacher said to me the other day were these organic values, these yes. things that you and I grew up with, honesty and uh, hard work and that sort of thing. As a young uh, representative of the people, how do you seek to go about imbuing these young men in your constituency? That hard work is important, that good manners and uh, civility, that these things are important. Sir, people don't do what you expect, they do what you inspect. That is why for the first phase in your life and my life, we were under tutors and teachers. I think they said even, even Jesus was under tutors and teachers until you reach that point when you say, when I was a child, I speak as a child, and I said, but now I put away childish things. The, we, we need to get back to where we put our children in the children's pen. That's the place, the walls, the barriers to show respect be home at time because the training that they get in play and discipline trains them for how they operate in life. Right now you see little babies in the pampas twerking and the parents laughing in the background. Then what do you expect that child to be when that child begins to see she has a little bit of backside and a little bit of breast popping out? You, the first thing the child is learning is twerking. Children are, don't even cuss now. They cuss artistic, not autistic, artistically. 
they, they, they cuss with such rhythm and rhyme, if you don't catch yourself, you'll be smiling at it. Just the, because they inherit so much from their children, from their parents and, and that around. They see how their parents cuss out their parents, and then you expect for them to treat you somewhere different. That's why the strategy that uh, uh, we're bringing into Pinewood is holistic, and, and it's so simplistic that people don't even realize it's happening. The thing about it is this. If you love and treat your elderly right, you're saving yourself. See, oh, go address the children. No, the children don't have examples. So if we could teach the people now, treat your elderly right. Don't worry. You even got to love them. Do it for your sake. Let me tell you why. Because if your children see how you treat your mother, then when you get older, they know how to treat you. Yeah. Where are you on the urban renewal uh, program that... Um the former government uh, had in place. Um, your support of that, you no. think that, no? no? No, not in the least. Actually, I disconnected myself from it, not because of politics. I think it became very foolish. I'm going to say it very, very fast because it irks me even now. Okay. When they got to the point and they began to centralize the fundraising or urban renewal, that began to set the vacuum out of altruistic giving for so many other programs. They tried to make urban renewal like a panacea. Oh, come to us and do all this. Um, it got to the point of saying, you know what, you, you, you guys, you, you, you joking, man. You're doing too much problem. So in other words, um, and so it, it got to the point that it, I say, you know what, enough time. Okay. Um, when you're ready to reset, we could do it. Then it became too, too, even more so politicized in that regard. Um, there were failings from the police department. There were failings um, um, from a policy perspective and everything else. You know what, we need to go uh, right back to Edmund Moxie's model and just revert right back. The and problem, what is, what is that? Uh, remember Edwin Moxie, Edwin Moxie, Jumbe Village, mm. and he was the one who really originated the concept. Um, it, I mean, it's not new worldwide, but locally in terms of the spirit of urban renewal, it would have started in the Grove and Jumbe Village and all that, yeah, you know, yeah, National yeah. Insurance Center. is a wider picture that I invite people to go ahead and do some research on. Um, the urban renewal is to a point right now that uh, we have to fix it because so much has already has gone into it. Yeah, but there were marching bands and that sort of thing. Yeah, there were. There were. Young people g getting involved in after school programs. Yeah. Those worked, didn't they? Um, they those, things, those things had their benefits to it um, in that regard. And again, it's not telling it as a total failure in and of itself, but obviously there was a lot of wastage in it. Mm. Um, if I were to deal with it, I would go ahead and I would empower, um, I would more empower NGOs than to try and make it a government program. If Jones has a calling and he has been feeding people all on his own, scrapping for, for umpteen years, why am I going to create a program that compete with him? I'm going to look at him and say, all right, you little ragtag, here's my checks and balance. We're going to pump $50,000. I want you to double who you're feeding. You see what I'm saying? Um, urban renewal began to compete with the churches, began to compete with everything. People didn't even see it. It was like my ego thing and not a we thing. But I thought the churches were supposed to uh, get involved with the urban renewal program as the policemen were no. um, uh, pushing the program. In that, wasn't, um, that, wasn't wasn't, that wasn't happening from the perspective that I was in. I'll give you some examples because they hurt. Um, I, I watch at times, for example, in Fox, Hill, Urban Renewal started a renewal ban. At the same time, Mount Carey was doing a ban, and I think um, Macedonia is starting a ban and everything else. And guess where the children went? Yeah, come on, man. You know, you should know your community enough. So if you want to do a ban, you see a church already starting a ban, then go support the church's ban. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They have a holistic type thing. If, if you see, um, um, like I say, somebody who's doing a good job of feeding, and you know that's what they're called, give them your benchmarks, say this is the money, then go ahead and do this well. We mm -hmm. know there's always problems in government. Put mm -hmm. the checks and balance in. It was not all lost, but if it was the um, uh, outstanding success it was touted to be, I think I wouldn't be here right now yeah. because a lot was pumped into it. But I have to say this too about the crime initiative because we just spoke one point about it. Um, I spent a lot of time dealing with uh, crime throughout my life. What we're going to be doing in Pinewood very, very shortly, right after this festival, is we'll be initiating the Pinewood Keepers. Mm. And we are calling all security forces that live in Pinewood, police force, defense force, um, immigration, customs, even private security firms. We're starting with them first. I'm not pulling a river in the world in right now. Mm. I'm starting with them first because, remember, I believe in ownership. If you're going to sit here, you're living in Pinewood, man. Retired senior police officers, retired this. You really living in Pinewood. You mean to tell me all of us here, we can't figure this out? First questions, I already had a preliminary meeting. Why are my people telling me they can't trust the police? 
And I tell them, maybe you can't trust, but there's somebody you could trust. I said, there's enough of you in here that if she's afraid of calling 911 or crime testers, we need to have people in here we can trust, mm -hmm. who can get the job done. We have enough security forces in Pinewood. I sure easily we have probably over 150 of them. That's a police force in the community. Just yeah. in between them, their shifts, yeah. we should have no problem with that. We're going to start with them because I want them to have a sense of ownership. Then we will bring in urban renewal. See, if you bring urban renewal first, they take the wind out of it. Yeah. So you're going to have a, a crime watchers program. Um, a pine would keep us. You call it pine greater, pine would keep greater us. than that because okay. they want it. And then when we have the people who are professional and skilled, we'll invite the wider community to come attached to their expertise. But I want them to see that, listen here, I'm living in this community, I, I'm a part of this community, and I will step up in this community. I want them to begin to wonder now who's the, if that's a cop house I'm going to break into this time. I, I want to inculcating them that community is me, community is we. And whenever something happens, somebody always know in that community. Mm -hmm. And our police force will be super if they have actionable intelligence. I didn't, uh, I purposely didn't push uh, any questions on you with re regard to uh, the quality of governance, uh, um, generally speaking, but to uh, zero in on Pinewood. But I, I'm going to ask you this one political question. Please. In terms of how the new government has, has started, um, you are almost five months now into the, in, in this new government. How do you think you're doing? I think they're doing very, very exceptional. The thing we need to understand about kinetic energy is that the greatest part and the most greatest risk to your engine is always at startup. That's when the oil had been resting, and that's where things began to move, getting your inertia. Um, see, remember we talk about expectations. We, people don't expect things. We, we come in with such expectations, and that's what hurt us. And, and we fail to sink people into people there. The government is a big ship. To turn a ship, it doesn't have a brake or an emergency brake. It's how you turn it and how you move it. When you jump in the government, you don't just jump in and say, all right, we just roll. You got to get familiar with the data. You got to know if you trust the data, and you got to begin to move forward. So there is a period of uh, assessment. This is the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Mm. Do you really think that anyone can master the government, the problems accurately within four months? You have to assess that. You got to figure out. So what you're doing is you're maintaining. Then you got to review these laws and bring those and put them into place responsibly. We have a compendium of laws that over that break period from the immediate need of the budget debate was being prepared. Those things had to be prepared. And so again, we create unreasonable expectations from our people in mm -hmm. that regard. So are you suggesting that you weren't ready to, to, to govern from, from day one, but you, would, mm -hmm. you, you, and, and you had to do some assessments? No, let me tell you exactly where you have this building. This is a wonderful building you're in. Remember mm -hmm. when you bought this? Were mm -hmm. you ready to start JCN from day one? You already had it new, but the building needed to be adapted to your program. Mm -hmm. It's simple logic. Mm -hmm. If you buy a brand new house and you walk in there, are you willing? Is it a home from day one? You move in, you got to settle your furniture around. It's called reality. You know, um, and, and it's as simple as that. If I take over a company, I can be the best CEO. But when I walk in there, I don't know my secretary's name. Am I ready to govern for day one? Certainly, but the fact of government is knowing and getting hands on. And that's the reality. Whenever you make a shift, there's a continuance with government, but that is really folly, you know. You know why? Because whenever you're elected, you're given a new mandate. How is that continuous? Mm -hmm. So that means when I walk into there, I am walking in with my new briefcase by the people because they elected to say, I want that done. So when I walk in, if they say, I want the building painted, that's why I elected you. And you walk in there, are you not prepared to paint it from day one? But don't you now have to assess the cracks, fix the holes, so you make a proper paint job? It, it is an illusion and it's a misrepresentation. Um, when we say, oh, you're not prepared from day one. Me being prepared from day one has nothing to do with what started. I said to you before, people look at it. Success starts from the time a man makes that commitment and think. Then I get Jones on the ground and he started manifesting. I guarantee you within the five year period, the seeds, the commitment that you watered the seeds in the heart of Hubert Alexander Minnis would have already grown, would have already borne fruit. Some you will eat. 
some we will plant for a further harvest down the road. But the government was ready from day one, ready to clean, ready to line up, ready to assess, ready to renovate, and then you will see a new sign under new management. That takes time. Ruben Reming, uh, well, well stated. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your being here. And um, it, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have you, uh, a newcomer um, to the House of Assembly uh, here today. And I hope you can come to see us again soon. I'm always open to you. And, and, and invite your colleagues, because we need to get to know um, the new representatives. Uh, a whole lot of people don't uh, know um, the rep new representatives. They've not heard them speak, some of them. Uh, your thoughts, and uh, you have some wonderful thoughts. Thank you. I'm looking for a time that we could sit down and get delve a little deeper on policy matter. Yes. I, I love you, a very cerebral man. Yes. Um, there are a lot of pertinent things that we can um, address. That's not a problem. We're here to represent the people, um, represent the thought of our administration, and for me, I have no problem with speaking up, and if I don't know, I'll get it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Appreciate it's a pleasure. It. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for watching and listening to our program. Good evening, everyone. Thank you.